Hi all, this is um, Alan with Bothell STEM Coach, and today we're going to continue on with some um, AP Physics 1 rotation, rot rotational free response questions. As usual, I suggest you pause the video, attempt to do the problem on your own, and then watch the video after you've attempted the problem. So a bowling ball of mass 6 kilograms is released from rest at the top of a slanted roof that is 4 meters long and angled at 30 degrees, as shown above. The ball rolls along the roof without slipping. The rotational inertia of a sphere of mass m and r about the center of mass is 2m r squared over 5. So they give you what i is. On the figure below, draw and label the forces, not components, acting on the ball at the points of their application as it rolls along the roof. Okay. Well, I have... This is a free body diagram. I have gravity. But now, when you do the free body diagrams, it's important to note where you're putting the points because that will be very important for the torque calculations. So we're going to do that force there. At this point at the bottom, I have this force like this, the normal force. Now, the normal force acts at the bottom, like where the ramp is touching the ball. Okay. And then... Um, it... Um, it has a slight amount of friction resisting motion this way. Yeah, force of friction. Because they didn't say there was no friction. And, and technically, for this thing to start turning, it, had, it needs to have a little bit of friction. Like a slight amount, but it does need to have some friction. Okay, and that, again, that, uh, that force applies at this contact point on the ball where it touches the roof, because that's where friction is applied. Okay. Now calculate the force due to friction acting on the ball as it rolls along the roof. If you need to draw anything other than what you've shown in part A to assist your solution, use the space below. Do not add anything to the figure part A. Okay, they're basically like, this is your answer. Don't mess with it. Um, calculate the force of friction acting on the ball as it rolls along the roof. Um, So this is this is kind of a, a, a tricky, not a tricky question, but um, you might wonder like where do, where do I start with this? Well, this thing is rolling without slipping. So one of the things we have to do is it's definitely going faster as it accelerates, and is definitely spinning faster as it accelerates, right? So it's always the same. I do a free body diagram. The next step are my net force, and now I'm adding in because it's rotation, a net torque equation. So let's do the net force equation first. Now, I have x and y directions, so I have to be a little bit careful about um, uh, my, my, my net force equations. I got, I'm going to say x is positive in this direction and y is positive in this direction. And I honestly don't really care about the y direction because I don't actually, I don't have a kinetic uh, coefficient of friction or anything, and and when in case of rolling, it, it's not actually the right the right tool to use anyway. So I only care really about the x. So like the normal force isn't really going to matter, even though I could figure out what it is. What I need to figure out is the x direction net force. So this is in the x direction. Now the net force is in the x direction. I'm gonna I'm gonna draw on this figure, even though in your answers you probably shouldn't. Um, this has a component in the x direction. And if I draw this triangle, right, like this, this component in the x direction, this angle is 30 degrees, right? So in the x component, I have a force of gravity in the x component. It's in the positive direction because it is down. So that's um, Fg sine 30 degrees, right, minus force of friction. And so this is equal to m, let's see, what's, I'll just call it the mass, mg sine 30 minus force of friction. Now this net force, because it is accelerating, it definitely has to be equal to m times a. Okay, so I don't know really know the acceleration. I don't know the force of friction. This is not enough for me to solve like anything here. I know the mass and I know g and I know side, but I, I don't know what a and force of friction are. So I need another equation and that's the net torque equation. So the other equation I wanna bring in is net torque. 
Now let's think about all the forces that are acting on here. Because um, the force of gravity is acting at the point of center, it, it doesn't cause rotation. Gravity typically cannot cause rotation because it always acts at the center of mass. Okay, But in this case, this is the point of rotation around the center. Uh, so the gravity doesn't matter. The normal force also doesn't cause any rotation because if you think of the r vector, like if I if I kind of draw the 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 slant the slope here, this is my normal vector. But what my r vector is parallel, like there's no component of the r vector here that's parallel to. Remember the r vector being from the point of rotation to where the force is being applied. That r vector is parallel to the normal force, so the ramp pushing on the ball is not causing it to rotate. However, the force of friction is perpendicular to the r vector, right? The point of rotate, the friction is applied right here also, so this r vector is perpendicular. So my net torque really is only equal to the force of friction times r, the radius of the sphere. Okay. Now that has to equal i alpha, right? And they gave you the they give you i. Two m r squared over five alpha. Now, right now, these equations don't look related because, again, I don't know the force of friction. Now I have a third unknown, alpha. But alpha and A are actually tied together, and that's the key part of this equation. Um, alpha R is equal to A, right? So if I were to rewrite this, substituting one of these alpha R's with A, I would get 2M R over 5, and I'm grouping one of the R alphas into A over A. Okay, and then now that's equal to that. So the force of friction is really equal to 2m over 5 times a, right? Because I, I canceled the remaining r. So um, what did I need to find? I want to calculate what friction is. So this one actually tells me I can solve for a. A, I get a is equal to uh, 5 halves force of friction divided by m. And I'm going to plug that into here and then solve for the force of friction. So I have m. So sine of thirty degrees is uh, one half, right? So one half mg minus the force of friction is equal to five halves force of friction divided by m. Wait, why don't I divide by m? Oh, actually, the m. Oh, oh, times m. Uh, that's the acceleration times m. The m's cancel. So I get um, one half mg is equal to one plus five halves. That's seven halves uh, force of friction. Uh, the twos cancel, and so force of friction is equal to one seventh of mg. That's one seventh times uh, m is six kilograms. And g is 9.8 meters per second squared. So the force of friction is 9.8 times 6 divided by 7, 8.4 newtons. Calculate the linear speed of the center of mass of the ball when it reaches the bottom edge of the roof. Okay. Um, well, if I know the acceleration, and it's equal to 5 halves f over m, so a is equal to 5 halves. 8.4 divided by 6 kilograms. Times 8.4 divided by 6. This is uh, 3.5 meters per second squared. So I know it was, and I know it traveled 4 meters at this acceleration, right? It's accelerating this way at 3.5 meters per second squared. I need an equation that really distance and uh, final velocity and everything like that. And so there's two, e two kinematic equations that relate that. I could either look at this equation, delta x is equal to v naught t plus 1 half at squared. However, uh, then I would need to know the time, and I don't really like that. Since I don't have the time that it rolled, or I don't want to solve for that separately, I'm going to use this equation, v squared is equal to v naught squared plus 2a delta x. Now v naught is its initial velocity at the top, and it was released from rest, so that means this is zero squared. To a is three point five meters per second squared, and I know it traveled a distance of uh, four meters, 
So that's equal to v squared. So v is just equal to the square root of 2 times 3.5 times 4. Um, I get 5.29 meters per second. Okay. A wagon containing a box is at rest on the ground below, so the roof below the roof so that the ball falls a vertical distance of three meters and lands and sticks to the center of the box. The total mass of the wagon and the box is 12 kilograms. Calculate the horizontal speed in the wagon immediately after the ball lands on it. Okay. So what's going to happen is this thing is going to gain... Hmm. Actually, okay. All right, so let's be let's be let's let's be a little careful here. So I know the velocity here is 5.29 meters per second. That's what I calculated. Now, let's think about what's going to happen. It's going to gain vertical velocity, but it, it, it's going to collide and stick. And um, I don't actually care about the vertical. I only care about what happens in the horizontal direction. Okay. And when a collision like this occurs, and there's no external forces in the horizontal direction in particular, there's no horizontal forces, I only care about the horizontal momentum of the ball before and the horizontal momentum of the system after. Does that make sense? So it's conservation of momentum. Now, his the initial momentum in the x direction, I only care about um, the mass times the velocity of v in the x direction. What's well, mass is six kilograms. It's velocity because this is still at an angle of 30 degrees. That means like um, this is 30 degrees. So it's uh, 5.29 meters per second, 29 meters per second times a cosine of 30 degrees. Because I only want to care, I only care about the horizontal component of this vector. And this is 30 degrees. Okay. So it's initial momentum. Cosine of 30 is root 3 over 2. But you could use your calculator because I was just kind of lazy to dig in the cosine button. 27.5 kilograms meters per second. That's the units. And the momentum after horizontally also has to be equal to. Um, so it's the total mass of the wagon in the box is 12 kilograms times V. So V is equal to 27.5 kilograms meters per second divided by 12 kilograms. I get 2.29 meters per second. Okay. Hope you found that helpful. Um, and I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching the video guys. Please leave a comment, like, or subscribe below to catch up more of the content and see any links below. I offer free homework help on uh, Twitch and Discord. See you guys in the next video.